Hello, this is a high level discussion of a question on the forum that I'm finding very interesting. So far I've only played with using print screen to draw text on the screen. I was wondering how to make buttons and couldn't really figure it out so I followed through this forum post here. In particular the content examples is what we want to start with and try and explain what's going on in that example. It's kind of explained here, but maybe it would be nice to see it as we run through it. Okay, jumping over to the editor. We're going to look in the content examples. So that will have to open. I just pause. As it says here, open a level. And the level that we're looking for is Blueprint HUD. There's a ton of other ones to check through. Yeah. We'll look at the actors in this scene to start with. Play a start there. And uh, there's a little mesh for a health indicator. And if you click it, you'll see that this is not just a mesh, but a blueprint, which includes a few components like the light. And um, inside of that, there'll be functionality. So we'll sort of work our way back to this. Let's get started with a description of what we want to do here. So uh, the first thing we look at is sort of class blueprints for the HUD. And you can see that there's a, in this particular level, uh, the author of it has made a <coughs> game info HUD and it specifies what uh, the driving uh, classes or blueprints and blueprint HUD example is the HUD class. Okay, We can find it in the content browser we can also just go blueprints and uh, HUD it sort of shows up in the game blueprints list here. Alright, um, so let's open up the um, blueprint HUD and you'll see that it's pretty dense, you know, it's got a lot going on. The first thing we want to talk about is that there's this thing called a HUD interface again. Okay, now you have to sort of know a little bit what is an interface. It is really just a list of functions that you can access all over the place. How do we get the interface functions to be visible so we can see what's in there? We'll go to um, our general editor and go to blueprints open class blueprint this little rollout. This is all the stuff that's already there in the content browser pretty much and if you want to, you could just type in interface, I suppose, if you type it right. And uh, I think we're looking for this one. Now it's BPI, not BP small L, uh, just in case you type out BP, you know, Blueprint Interface, I guess that stands for. And there's the events there. So let's see what we got. Um, so you notice these are tabbed in the, in the uh, Blueprint Editor. The hard example, the interface events, you see there's not really any much of a graph there, but these are the functions that are listed in this particular case. So let's look at get player health. Um, if you right click on it, you can go open graph. There's usually not much of a point, it seems they're very straightforward. This interface, its job is to get the player health and return the value, whatever it may be at the moment when it's invoked. Uh, set objective. We'll just get the graph of that. Notice they're also tabbed. So it's set objective in this case is actually setting an objective by name. And uh, I believe it's mostly used in this case to specify an object. So an object in the scene is, yeah, there down here you can see, uh, an object in the scene becomes the objective that you're supposed to go and chase after. And we'll see how that is used in a little bit. So the name of the object is a string or a line of text. You can either set it to empty or you can set it to be something. So both cases I think I used in this example. Um, this is the actor in the scene and the name of it. Why do we have two here? Well, the, the, the actor is the actual object that's sitting around in the level. The name is what we would use to draw it onto the screen, the name of this particular object. All right, so we're going to do a display, which is what the HUD is for. The next one here, toggle menu, I'll just graph that. It's just a bool, so we can we can access this function to close or open the menu. Exactly what's going on here. Right? The main thing is there's a bool in here and we can access it, change it. 
If you're not really sure what is an interface, I would suggest to read the help in the documentation on what is an interface. They have a little pop-up menu that may appear if you're doing it for the first time, which should explain that you know it's just a list of functions you can access from other blueprints. I suppose, in my opinion, that having tons and tons of these would become a little confusing because they might just be anywhere, all over the place, in terms of assets, files, in your browsers and stuff. It might be a good idea to try building your uh, interfaces in sort of a comprehensive kind of style, where you have like as much as possible within a certain category of stuff. You put everything in the one place. What comes next? Let's go to the Blueprint HUD example, and you'll see that the events are here, Events Toggle Menu, Get the Boolean, and in this case we're setting it. So we get the Boolean and we change it. And this one is the uh, Get the Objective, set it to whatever is the current objective. The current objective must be set somewhere else, and then set the name to that, that object's name. This by itself doesn't work completely, it's also referencing variables that we need to look at elsewhere. Okay, uh, just to go through this kind of quickly event rec uh, receive draw HUD is kind of happening every time the HUD gets called. Um, I know it's not the right way to think about it, but I think of it kind of like tick for the HUD or kind of like on expose HUD, something like that. Um, it's not the correct way to think about this, just what sort of makes sense to me. Anyway, the point here in this is uh, we are taking the, the HUD size and uh, setting the screen dimensions from that. You see here, menu open. This is the condition, like uh, if the menu is already open, then uh, there's no need to display the buttons, I suppose. Right? Not sure what happens next. We get the health and uh, so on, right? If it's... Uh, if it's oh, sorry, that's false. If it's not open, then do all that. If it's true, then do this instead. Let's have a look at how the buttons work. Uh, the health stuff we'll look at last. Before we talk about this stuff, we need to actually see what goes on when you play the game. Right? I'm just going to minimize all that and go um, play. Walking back and forwards, you can see the number ticking down for the health pickup there. So the health pickup is the objective. Um, there's also a health bar at the top of the screen, and it's on 70% or so. And uh, there's press M for menu, that's just uh, irrelevant really for what we're doing. When we walk up to this guy here, it goes, oh, we get full, some full health. The message you restored some health is just a print text string, it's kind of like a log. When we press M, we get a menu popping up. This is what we really want to talk about. So M for menu in this case, um, you'll see when you click on things, they get a little uh, change. Now this is not some special flash uh, UI, this is just a texture that is projected onto the canvas and when you click it, it changes to another texture. And there's also a text element for each button. Um, and when you press uh, resume, the menu gets turned off and the uh, other stuff gets brought back up again. So we have to how, how how to do the click state, how to turn it off when it goes away, bring the other stuff back up, and when we quit, it's kind of like in Unreal Engine 3, you just do console command or whatever uh, to quit the game. That's a lot easier to set up. Yeah, she blows. Um, so how to draw the pause buttons? Well, we get the screen dimensions that we talked about. Um, well, we looked at just briefly. The X and Y dimensions are sort of in the HUD, and they are chucked out here into a variable and, and the variable is over on the side here somewhere yeah it's, it's here variable is this vector 2d so x y right the screen dimensions get put uh, for some reason they're divided by two to get the center of the screen um, that outputs floats and then uh, this little bit here's a nice little trick um, you don't have to do this but this is kind of cool um, in order to set the button, there's two buttons, right? So in order to set one up and one down, what they've done is they've done a, a vertical offset subtraction from the center, if that makes sense. Um, they find the center and then one button goes subtracted uh, and one button goes added a little higher by 64 uh, units in Y, right? So just, you know, let's just play around with this. Uh, 
I'm going to set it to um, 64 sideways and uh, 0 that way and then this one here 64x and whoops uh, and then there we go so if we play it now I suppose we'll compile that but um, so we press M and you'll see that the buttons are side by side. Now the gap here is just the, the value that we'd enter 64 has to be bigger because sideways is wider than up and down. But that's kind of what's going on there. Right? So we'll escape out. Let's put it back to what it was. Or just for fun, uh, let's make it um, 200 and I'll just keep it that way. That should work fine. I like to test things out every time so now I look pretty good. Notice we can't move when we're in the mouse mode. So it's kind of like cinematic mode toggle in UDK. I'm not sure where that's getting set here, but that, I guess that's what's going on. Alright, so uh, we've basically got the screen dimensions, subtracted an X and subtracted another X in the other direction, and that's the place where our buttons will be put. All right. So here's the draw button function, and you notice it says here uh, target is BP hard example. All right. This uh, draw button function is not established in some other class file or in C++ hidden away or anything. It's just it's right here within this particular graph or whatever, a blueprint. I'll just double click it uh, and we can see we're right into the here. So this is the process that creates the button. It doesn't include any of the data like what text does it display. It just says it's got some text. So we'll go look at this. This is a UI for a custom function. So it's kind of purple look here. Um, button screen location is not populated by any values, but it just feeds into position. So the hitbox that they add, that's going to go in that position. But you can see that there's a XY value here for drawing texture on the screen and so on. Right? Screen location. Right. The values actually come from the event graph proper. We'll look at where later, but you know, button screen location. It's uh, coming from the screen dimensions. Okay. So forget forget about what these values are for now. Just let's look at what's actually there. So the button text. This is like uh, so the pause button and the resume button are actually the same button. They just have different strings for their resume and pause. Right. Um, hitbox name so we can tell which is which and then button texture they both share the same texture let's just sort of go pick, pick through it once you know how to find this and you know in the, in the different files I'm sure you've got to figure a lot of this stuff out yourself measure the size of the text taking the font into account this is very clever so there's some sort of font file I'm just gonna see if I can find it in the content browser I don't even know if that is an actual asset or just some uh, something built in. Okay, let's try changing it. Well, I don't know what happened there, but some stuff stopped working, so I'm going to just jump back and reload the file, etc. I don't want to create my own little folder in here, so go to game and go new folder and call it custom or something. And then inside of that, we're going to go materials and textures font. Uh, create you know, right click and kind of like creating an asset and uh, it gives you a choice of fonts and stuff I'm just going to choose someone at random and then uh, uh, Adobe Gothic 18 and uh, we have a little asset to play with I'm just going to save that uh, just you know, a quick recap here um, we want to get our HUD up there so there it goes don't suppose we need to see the interface now, but let's just put it up to BPI, that one there. So that's up alongside it. And uh, we were playing with the space in the screen. I'm just going to keep on with that idea that I like them side by side. And, uh, And uh, the compile. Oh, yeah. so we're looking at the function for the draw button, and it has a font listing. Yeah, and that's when stuff started to go wrong. Uh, so let's go to custom here and look for our. Uh, it's a 
floating window so look for our little guy and see if we can replace it in there just like that so now we have a different font let's just compile the the text size here is it takes into consideration the font and what's in the text of that font when it's playing it gets set to resume and it gets set to quit so you have two um, panels that are dynamically adjusting so the width gets spat out and the height too and uh, divide text size by two this gets the middle I suppose that's what they're using that for make an offset and they're using this to uh, decide where to draw the screen inside the button something like that yeah it gives you the X Y position uh, in which to draw the text if that makes sense yeah so it's a really crazy way to figure out centered text I suppose uh, and so on. Right. Uh, the button dimensions here um, that's actually a literal value for the button dimensions um, we won't play around with that then uh, compile you and go to play I just want to see everything looks fine and yep. this is presumably using a different font than the original scene let's look at the texture part that I just clicked on there 